Welcome once again to yet another beautiful show here at Humanist TV Africa. You are most welcome to yet another beautiful show here at Humanist TV Africa. It's going to be fireworks as I talk about Christmas. Now, I want to encourage you to write to us at Humanist TV Africa at Porton.me. Write to us at Humanist TV Africa at Porton.me. We want to Join us, you may want to advise us, you may want to disagree with us, basically you want to appear in one of our programs and challenge our views, or you are a young journalist out there, you're a university student, preferably in your final year, you want to do your internship with a media house, you are a lawyer, you want to share your research, you're an engineer, you're a scientist, you are anything in the world and you want to work with us. As a volunteer, we want you to write to us. The email is right there, humanistvafrica at proton.me. Write to us and say, hey, I want to work with you. I want to join your panel. I want to share my ideas with the world. Trust me, you have your ideas. You have your themes. You want to share with the world. We shall give you free space. You will not pay us a single coin to feature on Humanist TV Africa. We will not pay us anything. Apart from you being there with your gadgets, we shall give you time and a producer to help you produce your program. We are a non-government organization. We are not here for profit. We are not here to work for profit. Though, of course, we need money to move, and we are grateful to those sponsors who enable us to be here, who have been able to help us buy studio equipment, help us get data here and there, we are grateful to those individuals pushing us to go ahead. And of course, we want to encourage you, if you are impressed, if you are happy with what you do, and if you want to continue seeing us on this camera, on this screen, please consider donating to us, consider supporting us one or another. We want to open up more studios. For now, we want to encourage you to subscribe to our Facebook page, but also our YouTube channel, which is Humanist TV Africa. Please go to Google. Put in Humans TV Africa. You are going to see us. And of course, I'm requesting you to subscribe to Humans TV Africa and see what we do, see why we exist. We are here because we want to share information. We are here because we want to learn from you. That's why we're encouraging you to come and we give you space and we speak. This TV is not about us alone, but it's about you too. Reaching out to humanity is our motto. So we want to give you space to come at Human TV Africa and speak. If you think we have something very important you want to share with the world, we are going to give you free airtime. Unlike other TVs we are going to be paying, we shall not make you pay. We shall simply give you space free of charge. Remember, we are an NGO, an NPO, not for profit. We are here for the truth. But also, what's important, we are here to change mindset. That's why you wake up every day and you see us here every day. We are volunteers interested in mindset change because we believe that we can have all the money, we can have all the resources, but once our mindset is still dark, once our mindset is not bright enough, once we cannot think for ourselves, we are going to have lawyers, engineers, doctors, 
doing suicide bombing because the mind is still into what I call mental slavery. Now, I give that background because it's important to you for you to know who we are and why we exist. We are Human TV Africa. Africa is used symbolically. Africa is used symbolically because all of us are Africans. Our origin is Africa. I come from Uganda, and Uganda, Tanzania, I believe to be part of the origins of humanity, like it or not, go and research. My country, the Southern Nile and Tanzania, partly have been explained to be the source of humanity. People came from my area. Whether you are Caucasian today, whether you are Asian, science is proving and archaeology and other that actually all of us have our origins in Africa. That's why I'm always very proud to call myself African, though, because the name African is also borrowed from the colonialist, but nothing to do. As schematic people, we say we are Africans, but technically, scientifically, all of us are Africans. Now, that was an introduction. My name is Katom Kasa. I'm very proud to be a Ugandan. And the reason I keep on talking about Africa, because my origin is my root, and I'm proud of my ancestry. Today I'm going to talk about Christmas, but in the studio is my brother Dennis Bongole and Brian Kabeko. Dennis Bongole is a Ugandan like myself. Brian Kabeko is a Kenyan. And Baya Hassan is a Kenyan. I have three producers today that are going to be helping me run this show. This is how important this show is today. Three producers, two producers in Kenya, and one producer in Uganda. Now, we have studios in Uganda, we have studios in Kenya, we have studios in Nigeria, we have studios in Zambia and Zimbabwe, and we have a studio in the UK, and we have a studio in the USA. We have studios in those countries I've mentioned, and we want to build more studios in the world. That's why I still call upon you to join us and we have these studios right in your country. We want to be a virtual TV, but also a TV with official physical studios. That's why I take my time to call upon you to join us, to take the good news of mindset change. That's why we are here. Today, I want to tell you something very important to me, which is going to annoy some of you, and I don't care, by the way, which is going to annoy some of you, and I repeat, I don't care how you take it, it's up to you, but I'll tell you why I don't celebrate Christmas and why I see people celebrating it in a different light. Though, of course, I respect their views and their choices, but I don't celebrate it. Why do I not celebrate Christmas? My name is Katom Mukasa, and of course, these are my personal views. Strictly personal, and the topic is very personal to me. Remember, I told you, that I grew up in Uganda in a Catholic family where my father was not so Catholic, but my mother was strictly Christian. And my mother used to make Christmas a very big thing because on that day, we could get the best of clothes and we could keep our Christmas clothes every December. I have the best shoes, suits, and, uh, you know, good clothes. Then that day, as I've been saying, my mother would cook foods that we don't normally eat at home. I remember macaroni and some oats and others. These were exotic foods, which we couldn't eat on a daily, but we could eat them at least on uh, Christmas or on Easter. Yet my mother was not a poor woman. My mother was a nurse, had a clinic. We basically had almost everything we wanted in life. We could eat beef, we could eat chicken, we could eat fish. My mother being a nutrition, um, a, a scientist, a nurse, knew how to balance that. She could feed us very well, I could say, throughout the year. But why were we always looking up to Christmas? Because on Christmas, she could buy special foods, especially from the supermarket and then spice up 
what we normally get from the gardens and from the abortion and all that. So it will be a special day of eating, a special day of dressing, but also a special day of showing off, as I've been saying. And on Christmas, it was the day when we could go outside our home, go to church and put on our Christmas best, and then we show off. Simply let people see how smartly we are dressed. Then after eating the good foods, then we would go and watch football. Sometimes there are tournaments. Again, we are in our Christmas best clothes. Then in the evening, you go and watch movies, others go to dance. My mother was a bit secular in a way she was up raising us up front, very strict. She would allow us to go to dance, go to movies, go to watch uh, a football. But of course, we have to keep the time at home and be back on the time we have agreed with your mom. And my father was more secular in a way, more relaxed, didn't have much to do with these days, was always a very free spirit. But my mother was strict on going to church and of course celebrating these big days. Up to now, my mother sees these days as important. But why should I blame my mother? My mother is 80 years plus. She has her views. She was perhaps influenced by her background. And that's her understanding of life. My mother thinks she's going to heaven. Who am I to say she's not going to heaven? I'm an atheist, she knows it, but she insists on these days. She insists on celebrating Easter, on celebrating Christmas, and it's okay with me. Just like it's okay with seeing other people celebrating these days. But me, as an atheist, if you understand what it means, as a person who doesn't believe in gods, that gods exist. Even when my name's Kato is the name of a god, twin god, and then Mukasa is the name for another god of the seas. But still, I don't believe in gods. Whatsoever, whether these gods are African gods, call them black gods, whether the god, these gods are Caucasians, whether these gods are uh, Asians, I don't believe in gods. People think that actually gods were Jesus Christ alone. No, the gods were in thousands. And in fact, we have 4,200 gods. But I don't believe in any of those gods. 4,200 gods. People in Schengen area, the Danes, the Norwegians had Odin, God Odin, Odin. They were expecting to go to heaven called Vahara. The Saxons had their own gods. People forget that the Saxons call them the English, the British, had their own gods. The Vandals, the Visigoths, all these guys had their own gods, including Yule, Y-U-L-E, Yule. Philippines had their own damn gods. The Greeks, the Romans had gods such as Apollos, Zeus, and others. In fact, Romans had all these gods, Jupiter, Nupiter, Mars, all these planets. And some of these stars were gods. So gods were so many. Then Kemetic Africa. People think Kemetic Africa means Egypt. No, Egypt was simply a capital city. It was the epitome of Kemet. But there were gods in Kemetic Africa including Amun-Ra. That's why every religion today says, Amen, Amen. Where does Amen come from? Amun-Ra. Then there was God Hedo, the sun god, S-U-N, the sun god, God Hedo. Then there was uh, Isis, the god mother, the Holy Spirit. These were climatic gods, Kemet put there Africa, if you want. Black gods that were once worshipped by even Caucasians. Some of these gods actually featured in some of their coins at one point in life. Now, these gods that were actually worshipped by people in Africa, people in Arabia, call them Arabs. People actually forget that Jesus Christ was never European. Jesus Christ was never a Caucasian, was an Arab, but they, they even forget that, and they think that Jesus Christ had those blue eyes. <laughs> no. 
they think Jesus Christ was Caucasian. No, the Romans hijacked the whole concept. It has assumed it was right. But the Arabs had their own gods, quite a number of gods, before Muhammad invents his own Allah and others. The Romans have their own gods. The Greeks have their own gods. The Jews had Yahweh, Eli, and the other names they gave their own god. Until people in Kemet came up with the concept of one god. Where did the concept of belief in one god come from? It comes from Kemet. What is Kemet? The land of black souls. Where do we find it? Present day Africa. The worship of one God starts in Africa. All these gods have been there until one Kemetic pharaoh, call them a king if you want, says, We are tired of having all these gods. You are going to start worshiping one God. And these are thousands of years before your Jesus Christ was born. Or the Romans inverted your Jesus Christ. People in Africa had begun worshipping one God. One God. They thought they had so many gods, as I'm going to show. But then they said, what? Why don't we worship one God? All these other gods can be under one supreme creator. Amun-Ra, the creator, the father God. So they come up with one God. And then later on we see these other people copying. You cannot say that Judaism, the oldest religion. No, it's not. There are older religions than Judaism. Hinduism is much older. Buddhism will be much older. So people think that, oh, Judaism is the oldest. No, it's not. I had a show here, simply go in my archives. And I told you the 10 oldest religions in the world. Judaism is the oldest religion. The Judaism is older than Christianity. And Christianity is older than Islam. Islam is a very young religion, which is about 1,300 years ago. Med. Islam is only about 1,300 years ago. Med. Then Christianity, about 2,000 years ago. Then Judaism, slightly older than Christianity. But there have been older religions than that. So when you look at all these religions, I've been using this platform to tell you how did Christianity start? A cult that crops up in Jerusalem, or call it Israel, and then it is propped up, it's pumped later on after years of fighting it, after years of fighting the Jews, then the Romans, remember, they can use Christianity as a weapon. There is a cult coming up, and the Romans have been fighting it because Jerusalem is under the control of Romans. And talk about Herod. The man said to have been there at the birth of Jesus Christ. The leader on behalf of the Romans. Herod, if you look at your Bible, Herod was there, it is true, he was the ruler of that part that was under the Romans, Judea and the others. But God being there doesn't mean that Christ was there. As the Christ, you know, in the Bible, I've made those lectures already here. You can simply go back in my archives and see. I've told you how the Jews fought Romans, for over 500 years, <laughs> Jews were fighting Romans. Jews were fighting Romans for over 500 years. They are refused to be ruled by Romans. Remember what philosopher Cicero said, telling Nero? Cicero, one of the best philosophers among the Romans, said, how do you allow the people who we rule to give us instructions on how to worship. How can the people we rule as Romans give us instructions on how to worship? Cicero is asking questions. He's asking Emperor Nello. He's asking Nello. And then Cicero, with another general called Pissot, 
try to overtake Nero. And what does Nero do? Because Nero does not agree with their approach on handling the Jews. They have different approaches. Then Cicero, Nero forces them to commit suicide. Piso and Cicero are forced to commit suicide. These are historical facts. You can look them up. But why? Because the Jews for many years had refused to accept that the Romans have equal powers with their gods, that the Romans are holy people. They call them pagans. They call them heathens. They call them infidels. They call them uh, um, heretics. They call them anything to demean them. So when you hear Emperor Nero killing Papiso, killing Cicero and others, and the burning of Rome, and then the burning of Rome being used as a scapegoat that the Jews have done it, then they are killed in numbers. When you look at emperors, call them kings or rulers, like um, uh, uh, Adrian, who killed thousands of Jews because they refused to submit. Then you look at uh, Nero sends there his general, general Piso, I mean, uh, uh, Vespasian, Vespasian goes there to quelly, uh, to quench, to stop the riots by the Jews in Jerusalem, in Judea, and then uh, uh, Vespasian fails to defeat them. Nero dies, of course. Nero is killed, and then Vespasian uh, takes over as an emperor, as the leader of Rome. Then Vespasian also fails to defeat the Jews. Then Vespasian dies after a few years in power, then his son, Tito, or you call, them, you call him Titus, who becomes even a book in your Bible. Titus becomes a ruler of Rome, or the Roman Empire, if you call it that way. Then Titus also rules them and fails to defeat the Jews. There's an insurrection, the Maccabean uh, insurrection and all that. The Jews are standing up against the Romans. The Romans are the rulers of the world, but the Jews have refused to accept the Romans. So, Emperor Nero dies, Vespasian takes over, Vespasian fails to defeat them, and the Emperor comes, the son of Emperor Vespasian is called Titus. Titus comes in, takes over the reigns of Rome, the empire, and then Titus still fails to defeat the Romans, I mean the Jews. Again, the brother of Titus takes over Domitia, takes over. So even the Misha fails. They are all failing to defeat the Jews. The Jews are rebelling. The Jews don't want to accept Romans. Number two, the Jews think that Romans are pagans, are heathens, are not holy. How can people who are not holy rule us? The Jews have refused. Now look at all those emperors that came in. There are quite many. After the Misha, there are others that came in. But all of them failed to control the Jews, including the great Julius Caesar, failed to control the Jews, including Caligulus, including the great philosopher uh, emperor, Mark, Marcus Aurelius. All of them failed to control the Jews. So how are the Romans going to control the Jews? By allowing Christianity come up crop it up, and then this cult takes over as the main religion of Rome. And who does that? Of course we know it is Emperor Constantine. And the year is 325, Constantine calls the Council of Nice, which is somewhere in Turkey, and then they have this kind of meeting, and all of these bishops of a cult called Christianity come together, they decide on which books is going to make the Bible, which book is not going to make the Bible. And for the first time, the Catholic Church becomes a dictatorship that ceases to accept truth. Ask yourself, if all these books were written for over hundreds of years about Christ they never saw, how come that the Council of Nicaea simply decides to leave some books out and then leave some books in? the Bible. Corruption starts from there. They select what truth to give you as Christians and what truth to live out. So they make the truth in their Bible. Books that are harsh on them are left out. 
the so-called lost Bible, lost books of the Bible are left out, and then they create a Bible that sells their image, that sells their propaganda. A Bible in brief is a propaganda of the Roman Empire. In simple terms, if you ask me, a Bible is the best propaganda of the Roman Empire. And then, as the others have gone, the Bible became the best propaganda of Western imperialism. I'll repeat that one again for my viewers. That as the years went on, the Bible became the best tool of propaganda for Western imperialism. That's why I don't like the Bible. Because I detest Western imperialism. And the Bible was used by Western imperialists to conquer us. Most especially to conquer us mentally. It begins where? Rome. The year is 225 in the Council of Nicaea. Then we see Constantine was satisfied. The year is 331 through the audit or edit of Milan. The edit of Milan, which is a law, the edit of Milan. They make Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire is the biggest empire at that time. It covers the entire Medi Mediterranean area. It covers much of Europe and covers much of Asia. Roman Empire, one of the strongest empires in the world, covers much of that Europe at that time. Now, they have made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. By who? Constantine. He simply tells them, I had a dream and God told me to become a Christian. Constantine's mother was a Christian. It was a cult. Now, they are making a cult the official religion of Rome. And Rome is not Italy. It's not Italia, as we call it. Rome is an empire. Rome means the world. Rome had covered much of Africa, the Mediterranean area. Rome had covered much of Europe, including where I am today, the UK. <laughs> Rome had covered them. Rome had conquered them. Rome had conquered much of Europe, Netherlands, um, uh, France, German, UK, all these countries. Rome had covered them at one point. But also, Rome had gone ahead to cover much of Asia and the Arabia, Arabic world. So, imagine they have made Christianity the official religion. And they go ahead and say, we are Christians. If you want to survive, you must become a Christian. So, Christianity is used as a form of imperialism. So, before we begin celebrating Christmas, I want to bring to this history which is a factual history. Ask yourself, how does Christianity become a religion? And how does it spread to the world? Were the Nordic people Christians? Were the Visigoths uh, Christians? Were the Saxons, call them the English, Christians? Were the Danes Christians? Who was a Christian? It was a cult. And the first church we see it in Antioch. Where is Antioch? It spreads. Now, who is helping them spread? Emperors help it to spread. Why? Because they have discovered that Christianity is going to help them consolidate their power. They go to England. They go to German. They go to France. They fight everyone. They kill everyone. And in fact, people in France resisted for so many years. People in Scotland resisted for so many years, resisted Romans taking over their territories. They were heroes in Scotland, they were heroes in Germany, they were heroes in France who resisted the Romans to take over their territories. They fought until when they were defeated. That was blood and iron to spread Christianity. Christianity has never been a region of peace. It was never a religion of peace. It was spread through war and violence. So that's the religion we are celebrating today. And someone wants to call me a Christian. I'm not a Christian, come on. I'm not as 
so ignorant of history to call myself a Christian. I'm not. It's not my tradition. It's not my history. It's not in my ancestry at all to be a Christian. I'm not. Now, Christianity spreads as a tool to conquer. The Romans conquer much of the world. And the Romans are saying, if you want to survive, you must become a Christian. If you ask the English, why up to now they still have some names of some of their areas named after Romans? When they have some words in their language borrowed from the Romans, when they have some words in their prayers borrowed from the Romans, because Romans took over. Christianity is a religion that was used as a tool of conquering empires, conquering kingdoms. Christianity was introduced in my country in the year 1875. The year is 1875, when imperialists from the UK come to my country and force my ancestors to accept Jesus Christ. And for the first time in my country, it was not a country, it was a chiefdom, we have wars that are based on their religion. For the first time in the Buganda Kingdom, we have wars based on religion. Some people in my tribe have become Protestants. I don't know they are protesting what. They don't even know why the English became Protestants, but Ugandans of that time in Uganda, in Buganda, have become Protestants. And they tell you we are following the Church of England. Since when do Ugandans follow the Church of England? Since when is the Church of England our church? Since when do Ugandans follow the Church of England? Since when? That's imperialism. So they become Protestants. At the same time, there's a, a, a faction, they call themselves Roman Catholics. Since when are people in Africa allow themselves to be called Roman Catholics? I went to Roman Catholic schools. I was born into what is the so-called Roman Catholic family. Since when am I a Roman Catholic? When you look at me, you think I'm a Roman? When you look at me, you think I'm Roman. So you want to make me a Roman Catholic? Since when? Am I a Roman? When you look at me, you think, really, there's anything to do with Roman in me. So that is imperialism. But people, because of Ignorance, of course, they accept to be Roman Catholic. Since when are you a Roman Catholic? Since when are you Protestant? Since when are you born again? A born again. Those are foreign religions which we are used for simply conquering our people, conquering our lands, and subjugating our ancestors, and of course, perpetuating slavery, promoting slavery. It was Christianity. It was Islam. Now, having said all that in the introduction, I want to give you now, how does Christmas come about? Because I want to tell you, why therefore do I not celebrate Christmas? How does then Christmas come about? It's a pagan practice completely. Italians had their own way of celebrating that pagan practice. Today they call it winter solitaries in countries in Northern Hemisphere. Go to the map and ask yourself, what are the countries in Northern Hemisphere? You may be surprised to find um, Jerusalem, to find Israel part of them. Of course, most of these countries in Europe are part of it. Now, there's a point when days become shorter and nights become longer. Days become shorter, darkness comes at about 4 p.m. And light comes at about 7 a.m. in the morning. You can imagine that the nights are longer, the days are shorter. So winter, solitary. There were days when people in Europe thought that the gold sun was dead. Remember in Kemetic Africa and in much of the world, the sun 
was our God. As in Kemet, where my ancestors lived, the sun was our God, the gold sun. Even in Europe, even in Asia, the sun up there was their God, gold sun. Now imagine when there were days and the sun was not to be seen. There was little sunshine and then too much darkness. And yet these people thought that God's son was their real God. And no one can blame them because even in Kemet, Africa, we worshipped God's son. So now when God's son became scarce, there was a problem. People thought maybe their God had died. So it is. It's that time when the sun becomes, at, goes on, on what we call a standstill. It's as if the sun is not moving. It's as if the sun has stopped moving because now there's too much darkness. The sun is on a standstill, solitize. Now, days from 22nd, 23rd, 24th, those three days, people thought that the sun was basically dead is not moving. The sun is at a standstill on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of every December. Yet on the 25th, the sun starts to move gradually now. It has been on a standstill, but on the 25th, it begins, it begins to move. So they thought that the sun had died in their wisdom on the other three days, but again, on the 25th, it has begun moving. Therefore, the sun has resurrected. Solitus, winter solitus. So they began celebrating the resurrection of their sun god. People in Northern Hemisphere. The same happened with people in the Southern Hemisphere, but not in December. The month is in June. So there's a sun not moving for some three days, there is too much darkness, and they think sun god is dead. They are worried their god is dead. Now, when the god starts moving, they celebrate. That's why 25th of December was a day of celebration. Was a day of celebration. 26th of December was a day of So the 26th of December was a day of celebration. Now, they are celebrating what? They are celebrating this season of their son God emerging victorious, beating the God of darkness. They are celebrating a season where the son God has defeated the God of darkness. And then the celebration would go on for about 12 days. From 25th of December up to 5th of January, they are celebrating. How were these Europeans celebrating? The Caucasians, if you want. They are having sex parties openly. Sex parties. You could simply find a woman and have sex the way you want. They were having songs, vulgar songs. They were eating, drinking, special foods. And later on, as years went on, they began now making it much more improved by having uh, trees, cutting trees, decorating them. Then later on, they began having gifts, extending gifts. But it began as a pagan practice. So who hijacks this pagan practice? And it had names. I talked about Yule or Yule, Y-U-L-E. And the other names they were giving it. The Dan, the, the Danes, then the people in Denmark, people in Norway, people in, in German, people in the Saxons in the UK, and the others, all of them had their different ways of celebrating that day. It was pagan day. It was a pagan day of celebrating the gold sun. Remember? Jesus Christ is called the son of what? The son of God. Don't you ask yourself, how does Jesus Christ? Become the son of God. Now, if they are seeing the son of God resurrecting on the 25th day of December, 
And then there is a son of God. The son of God is S-U-N, son, S-U-N. But again, the Romans have called a son of God, S-O-N, the so-called son born of a virgin Mary, which never happened anyway. Now, they have an invented Jesus Christ. They have called a son of God. But also they have a real son of God, the real son. So the real son, the day is 25th, but they have this Roman God. How do we match the two? We have Christmas then. Politicians decide on Christmas. Popes decide on Christmas. Look at history, look at Pope Julius and the others, how they decided on which day. There are even writers like Sextus Africanus. If you look up the history, Sextus Africanus, one of the uh, historians, Greek authors, who was a, um, um, a Christian author who talked much about Christianity, talks about 25th day of December and how it came to be a Christmas day. Look for works of Sextus Africanus, the Greek author and Christian traveler, and what he talked about Christmas and how he had observed what was being done in Kemetic Africa when he had gone to Egypt as a traveler. Now, all this should inform you, why do we have Christmas today? Why is the day that was pagan worship? Because first of all, I told you in one of my episodes that Christ, if at all he was born, was never born on 25th of December. What else, well, if at all he was born? Because the Jewish calendar is different from the Gregorian calendar, is different from the Julian calendar. The Jewish calendar is even different from the Copt calendar, the Ethiopian calendar. That's why in Ethiopia, they are going to celebrate their Christmas on the seventh day of January. Check it out. They don't celebrate their Christmas today. So for you, you think you are special to celebrate Christmas on 25th day? Which, first of all, is the wrong day because when you look at the Jewish calendar, Christ might have been born in September, not even December. Then you are here making noise about Jesus Christ and 25th day of celebration. Then you find these hypocrites who say, oh, for me, I'm an atheist, I'm a humanist, but I celebrate Christmas because it's a day to family reunion. Come on. Simply be honest and say, it's your day. It's the day your ancestors have been celebrating. You will pin your ancestors. We are celebrating Christmas thousands of years ago. But the name simply changed. That, those are the facts. Don't hide around. I said that uh, humanists in the UK, humans are everywhere. They are celebrating Christmas. Yes, you are right to celebrate because it's your day. It's in your tradition. You had Yule, you had all these days. Your ancestors celebrated 25th day of December centuries ago. It was your day, celebrate it. But me, whose ancestors never celebrated it, I will not celebrate it. For whatever reason you gave me, I will not celebrate it. It's imperialism. It's colonialism. It reminds me of colonialism the relics of colonialism, you come to my country, you come to my tribe, and you give me your religion, and you force me to celebrate your days. That is cultural imperialism. To conquer me, give me your language, give me your education, give me your values and traditions, and still force me to celebrate your traditional days. That is imperialism, which, I don't agree with. You will okay to celebrate it because your ancestors did so. Not me, not my ancestors. You simply brought your religion in my country in 1875. So since when was I a Christian then? Since when did I become a Catholic then? Since then? Therefore, I should take your days seriously. When I know the origins of your days, mired in paganism, in many gods, in the God Son, S U N, in the resurrection of the Son, and you want me to partake in this celebration, a celebration full of confusion, a celebration that promotes imperialism. 
among my people that promotes mental slavery among my people. People cannot reason properly because we have made them think that's all about you. It's all about your traditions. It's all about your culture. They cut Christmas trees, destroy nature, and then put in their houses because it's the season. They spend recklessly because they must impress everyone. They pretend to be good when they are not good people at all. And then they will tell you it's a time to meet family. You can meet your family on any other day. There's no way you can come to me and tell me, Christmas, what does Christmas mean? Christ mass, what does a mass mean? Go back and find the definition of a mass. So Christ mass, how do they are telling me Christmas? Christ mass, am I a Christian? Or oh, am I going for a mass? No way. So I don't celebrate it. Then help me show me those slides. I'll take a bit of time to explain those slides and then I'll conclude it. Why I don't celebrate Christmas. I've already talked about uh, winter solitas. I've explained the origins, even if I don't go into that now. I've explained why the Europeans took time to celebrate that period, winter solitas. Then let's leave it there for a minute and I'll explain it. And I've said that there were pagan celebrations of a god called Mithra, a god called Mithra by these people in Northern Hemisphere. And then we see, I've talked about the 12 days of celebration from 25th December to 5th January. I've talked about the practices they were doing, including kissing over uh, the, the mystery toy, uh, decorating trees, the sex orgies and all that. I've talked about, of course, what did that symbol mean? So it has talked about the sun and then the resurrection of that sun after a few days when it has been under a standstill. And then I've told you how they were equating the sun, God, to the son of God. The sun God, which is S-U-N, equating it to the son of God. Then the Soitas, their ancestors, the ancestors of European who thought that there was a death of the sun between the 22nd and the 24th, because the sun in the Northern Hemisphere appeared to be at a standstill, as if it was not moving. And then on the 25th day of December, the sun began moving. Then the God Son was born, hence the birth of Jesus Christ. Because they thought that oh, since the sun has begun moving again, we are going to leave the, the, the dark nights for a better season. Then the sun has begun moving. So a sun has been born to us. And they call that sun Jesus Christ. And of course, I've told that people in Northern Hems no, in Southern Hemisphere also celebrated the same season. But it was in June, between June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Those in the Southern Hemisphere were also celebrating the same, same, same season and same confusion. So the sun, so it is, simply means sun standing still in simple terms. It was an occult. It was more of a paganism. For example, look at what the Spaniards would call this season or Christmas, Navidad. The Saxons, Anglo-Saxons called it Gero, D-E-O-L. Then the German, the, 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 there were the Germanic, Germanic tribes, the Vikings, the Danes, and the year is about 140 BC. Look at that history, 140 BC. These guys are celebrating their version of Christmas. 140 BC, before the Common Era. They had their god, God Odin. They had um, uh, these other gods. The, the French called it Noel which was more of nativity. Then, of course, we see um, the Italians calling, calling it Natari, or Natari. And then, of course, we see these other people um, inventing Santa, they invented uh, Santa Claus, as they call it, a mythical figure. They invent, later on, the socialist inventor, Santa Claus, or how they are going to say it, a mythical figure and all that stuff. Then remember, on the 25th day, these people, then it's give me another shot, another figure. Uh, give me another another image. I will show you a bit of the time. I'm still explaining winter solitaries. Get naked, drink, need, and party like a pagan because 
Christmas spent <laughs> queuing at Argos in just bollocks. <laughs> in just bollocks. Yeah. They were getting naked, drinking, eating, having all these sex parties. This is how they, that's how they are celebrating this day. Winter sweaters. That's how they were celebrating this day. Let's continue with another image, please. Yeah, you can see. December 5th is Krampus, or Krampus night, when men dressed as Krampus drink alcohol, run through the streets, and chase delinquent children around and hit them with sticks. Many anthropologists believe that the tradition is pre-Christian and goes back to pagan mythology. Thank you so, so much. You continue explaining why all this is uh, mythology, really. We we'll see these guys talked about uh, Santa and how they created Santa. Santa was created to make money. The capitalist in America, first of all, created Santa. And of course, in the rest of Europe, to make money, to get money out of you, to make fun. So a mythology, myth, mythical figure that they are going to give gifts and all that stuff, you know? Merry winter solitus. So may the solitus and turning of the wheel bring solitus uh, peace and good fortune in the coming year. Welcome to the returning of sun with joy. Yeah, you see, that's how they were looking at winter solitus. The return of sun with joy, winter solitus. They were celebrating the sun. Then let's continue, please. And you could see, you see, I'm getting you figures, images to show you how they are celebrating this. They look at nature and they look at nature as in terms of God. You see? Yeah. Odin. I talked about God Odin. Google God Odin. Who are the guys worshipping God Odin? The Danes, the Norwegians, and the others. God Odin. Iceland, that side. Schengen countries had their God Odin. Then they invent Santa Claus. When was that? Look up history of Santa Claus in the uh, cities like um, uh, New York, Boston. Chicago, all these cities have a history of Santa Claus and the magic mushrooms. And then Coca-Cola companies and others are using that to promote their goodies, to sell their products. See? 25th December. These are all things I've been putting here to show you how all these holidays, especially Christmas, was simply motivated by capitalism, imperialism, and traditions rooted in paganism. It is the winter solitus, is the reason for the season. It's the winter solitus. And I told you what it means to say winter solitus. In fact, the war on Christmas is real. Here yeah, it says it happened centuries ago when Christians, Christian armies invaded Europe, stole pagan traditions and renamed their holiday after forcing them to convert at the point of a sword. Exactly, I'd say that. These guys, the Romans, go to the rest of Europe, they conquer Saxons, they conquer Scottish people, they conquer Germans, they conquer French people, they conquer all those Germanic tribes, and then they force them to take over Christianity. It was never their religion. Today they are telling you they are Christians. Since when were they Christians? Yule, I talked about Yule, is derived from the old Norse word for will, referring to the moment when the cycle of the year is at its low point, ready to rise again. Exactly. The point where the cycle of the year is at its lowest point, ready to rise again. That's Yule. Ask Europeans who know their history. They're going to talk about Yule. So you want me to worship Yule? You want me to celebrate Yule? Come on. I will not. Now, they say happy solitus. Happy solitus. I think that, that's fair enough. If someone told me happy solitus, maybe it's fair enough because it's their own God, it's their own days, it's not mine. I don't even want it. But yes, it's tolerable. Happy Christmas? No. Happy solitus? Maybe because you don't believe in these other Christmas things. Happy solitus? Fine, 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 fine. It's about the good sign. A merry pagan year to you all. Exactly. Exactly. And remember, Dennis, 
I talked about the three days until the winter strikers. Exactly. I've explained that. 22nd, 23rd, 24th, the three days until the winter solitaries. Those were very important days in Europe. They were celebrating. Those were very important days because their God was assumed to be almost dead. It was at a standstill in a way. The sun has not moved for a long time. It's as if it's not moving. They thought so anyway. Remember to support the banks and corporation this Christmas in their continued effort to enslave mankind by spending money you haven't got on things you don't need exactly. This is how I look at it. People spending money on things they don't need and spending money they don't have. They are borrowing, they are getting all these loans to celebrate what? To celebrate a day they have no idea about. There was a time when they used to call it Yuletide customs. The customs of Europe. King Haknon, for example, of Norway, changed the date of Yule to the 25th day of December. Look it up. A king was called King Hakon I of Norway. Changed the date of Yule to the date of 25th December to make it actually official that Yule was celebrated on 25th December so many years ago. It was a pagan, pagan way of worshiping. So when I see humanists and atheists uh, throwing this day into our nose, happy Christmas, I ask a question. To who? To me? To you? Because Christmas means something to you. It's our history. It is our history, people in the Northern Hemisphere. It's, it's your history to celebrate Christmas because it was part, the sun god was part. So it has, was part of your history. It was never part of my history. It was simply forced upon my ancestors. There is no way I can celebrate it. Don't tell any reunion. I can't reunite with my family, not on Christmas. Don't use Christmas as an excuse for reuniting family, giving gifts. It's your tradition. Cutting trees, Christmas trees, is your tradition, not my tradition at all. For example, where was the first Christmas tree cut? Was it in Germany? Which year was that? Where was the first Christmas card printed? Was well, it not in Germany? Look it up in history. It is your tradition, not my tradition at all. So there's no way you can continue promoting your tradition within my own tradition, my own cultures. I will say, no, that's not part of my tradition. Look at that. The image right there, the image of Jesus with a goat. Was it a goat or a sheep, whatever it is? Those are fake images. Was Jesus looking like that? If you look into the history, was Jesus an Arabic man resembling that man there? That's the Caucasian. Was Jesus Christ a Caucasian? So why do you promote that image there? If it's not imperialism that you promote, why don't you use the right image of this so-called Jesus? Why do you promote that Caucasian Jesus and sell him to African. Why don't you use an Arabic Jesus and sell him to people in Africa? Why do you promote that version of Jesus Christ? And you see everything has been copied from Kemet. Kemetic history has Amunra, has Helu, and Isis. Then the Romans create Jesus on my right hand, as you can see. Confusion complete. It's imperialism. Christianity is simply imperialism. Christianity is simply an advancement of Western imperialism in simple terms. They are simply promoting their imperialism in the world and they continue to promote that imperialism up today, which I say no. Some of us are not going to take it anymore. Look what that Jesus Christ there is the Caucasian. The question I always ask them is Was Jesus Christ in real terms, looking like this man, was this first a Caucasian? So why do you use this image to sell it to Africans? Why don't you use the image of an Arab and sell that image to the people in Africa? So you are promoting your own selves and your own imperialistic agenda to the people in Africa. That's why I say not to Christianity, because of course it doesn't promote anything to do with my traditions. Look at that image. He says it's going to come back soon. 
Today has been born, I'm told, but it's going to come back soon. It has been 2,000 years of waiting for that man to come back soon. To that image of a man. Look at that man. Purely Caucasian. But they say it was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. That man. But people don't ponder to ask, when did an Arabic man, a Semitic man, become a Caucasian? The Romans did it. The Romans made him look like them. Now look at that image, Dennis. Thank you so much. Just oppose the Son God and Jesus Christ. You talked about Yule. You talked about Soitis, the Son God. All people in the world worship the Son of God. Dennis, give me a minute there, don't move it. All people in the world worship the Son of God. Now, look what their Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <laughs> now, look what the Son of God of Africa, the Son of God of Asia, the Son of God of Europe. On my left is the Son, the real Son, that helps us to have crops and have a good life. On my right, is the fake son of God. So, how do they replace the son of God? They replace the son of God by giving you a fake God. They have called the son of God. Who does that? The Romans. Where are the Romans? By then, we can say Roman Empire, which had their headquarters in Rome. So the Romans create an, an image in their own face, in their own shape in their own skin color. Because the Romans, of course, are Caucasians. They create God in their own image and equate him to the sun God, which they have been worshipping partly in Europe, which have been worshipped partly in Africa and in Asia, because almost everywhere in the world, they worshipped the sun. For us in Kemet, in Africa, to call him Isis, we called him Helu, we called him Amunra, the three gods in one. But Helu, the sun god. Now, we worship the sun as a god everywhere in the world. Now, even Europeans worship the sun. I've explained that. So they replace the sun, S U N, as you can see, with a fake Jesus Christ. And as I've told you, if I told you was born, was Arabic, was Semite, never Caucasian. The patron was born, was not looking like the man I see in the on the walls of many homes in Africa. That is imperialism. And I repeat it, to put images of Jesus Christ in the homes of people in Africa is the first stage of imperialism. And that is mental slavery to keep our ancestors observing a Caucasian on their walls, that that Caucasian is their God, is nothing but imperialism. It's cultural imperialism, it is religious imperialism, it is mental slavery. That I oppose. They gave us images of a Mary. Should I ask them, there are bombs in Gaza. Israel is not even such a Bethlehem is at war. So where was Jesus Christ born today? Because there is a war. The question I ask you, has Christ been born today? I mean, it's a war. Because they are bombing everywhere. Oh, have you postponed his birth today? Christianity, just like Islam, is imperialism. Is supremacism. That's why they get a Caucasian instead of an Arab. Instead of giving you an Arabic Jesus who is a Semite, they give you a Caucasian Jesus in a, an image of a Roman person. And we know who was the first image of Jesus Christ. We know the first image of Jesus Christ was God from who? A son of who? They gave you the first image of Jesus Christ. And we know who are the first painters, the best painters in the world that made the first painting of Jesus Christ. 
Machiengelo and the others. Then they get these people, hide them there, and they give you the image of Jesus Christ in their own image. Remember their Bible says, let us make man in our own image. They make God in their own image. Then they bring those calendars. The first calendar was made in Germany. They bring those calendars, they bring those images of Jesus who is a Caucasian, and then they put these images in our sitting rooms. Why? They want us to believe that they are our saviors. They are not. They want us to believe that, oh, we have to look up to them, oh, they are going to save us. From what? Look at those images and then tell me. The chains and shackles was used to enslave you, you physically, and today, the Bible is used to enslave you mentally. I like that, Dennis. Let's continue with other slides. They are using Christianity. They are using Islam to enslave you more. Messiah got you a celebration Christmas. Does the, exactly. Massa, the master, will make you celebrate Christmas in chains. In chains. This is how our ancestors in Europe, our ancestors in the USA, we are celebrating Christmas. They are putting them under chains to celebrate Christmas because they are slaves on their farms. And they want you to continue to celebrate Christmas mentally. But they don't want you to understand your history, by the way. No. You talk about this history, they say you are bad because you are reminding them that you are enslaved. They, were, they put them in chain, chains. You can imagine a person like King Leopold of Belgium killed over 20 million people in Congo. Go and search it. Up to now, they don't want us to talk about King Leopold of Belgium. Leopold of Belgium killed Congolese, our ancestors, killed over 20 million Congolese, including my ancestors there took all the gold, took all the riches from Congo, and then today they laugh at people in Congo as poor, having stolen everything from them. Now, look at the tools they used to uh, uh, enslave us. Then us leave it there, I'm going to explain this. This is their toolbox when they are coming to Africa. What do you see there? You see a telescope, a telescope, whatever it is. You see the images of Jesus, the crosses. Their, their toolbox has the crosses, has the pens, has the binoculars, or to the, call them telescopes, or also has the gun. There's a gun inside there. Then I wish you could even make it much bigger for people to see it because this is going to be on and on for some time. What do they come with when they are coming to conquer us in Africa? They come with their Jesus Christ in a box. They come with a Bible, you can see it there. They come with the olive oil in that um, bottle there. Then they come with a, a binocular to see where they are going. Then they have a gun there and they have gunpowder. So they are using Christ. They are using Christianity as an excuse. So at one hand, they have a Bible. In the other hand, they have a gun. So they are using religion as an excuse to colonize you because they have been colonized also the same way. The Romans had colonized them the same way. So they come to you with an excuse of a religion enforced on them, forced upon them to colonize you, and then they promise you heaven, and they tell you, happy are the poor. At the same time, they are stealing from you. Those are imperialists. Then let's continue. This is what is happening on a Christmas day. They gather young people in halls, in theaters, and pray for them a video of Jesus Christ. This is what my mother wanted me to watch when I was growing up. Every Christmas, all the stations are awash with videos of Jesus Christ. And who do we see on the cross? A Caucasian is our Jesus Christ. That's mental slavery. That is imperialism. That is imperialism. Because even the image was not for a Caucasian. If it at all it was true, it was a Semitic person who would have been ideally an Arab, a brown person. But no, they're not even using a brown person. They are using a Caucasian. 
And I deliberately don't say white because white doesn't exist. They are using Caucasian to market that, that they are your saviors. They are not your saviors at all. They have never been your saviors at all. But they are using that as a weapon. They are using that as a weapon to mentally colonize you, to mentally think that they are the solutions to your problems. They are not. Then let's continue. And look at how mentally enslaved my people are. The image from my country, the image from Africa, they are celebrating Christmas. Mentally enslaved. You are going to see them needing before any image of a so-called Mary. Thousands, millions of Africans are mentally enslaved. Look at this, a fully grown up adult begging for forgiveness Call them blessings from a two bags of cement mixed with some concrete and paint. That is how helpless people in Africa are. That is how helpless. They think in a rapture. They have been made to think that they are going to heaven. Happy are the poor, for the kingdom of God is theirs. They have been captured mentally. Meanwhile, they are stealing from them. I told you, King Leopold of Belgium killed 20 million people in Africa, took our gold, took our ivory, took our everything. And the killing has never stopped in Congo. But no one talks about those killings, no. No, but they are promising one thing, you are going to heaven. And they want me to come here and celebrate, oh, Merry Christmas. I will not. I will not help you to say it. So, look at how they are teaching children. They tell them, he sees you. God sees you when you are sleeping. He knows when you are awake. He is already out. The phone lines. There really is no escape. You know, they tell you, God is seeing you, whatever you are doing. Mental slavery. Then let's continue. So the benefits of Christianity and Islam that brought to the world were the following. Fear, poverty, gullibility, hatred, division, and false hope. Nothing else. Christianity and Islam, what they brought in the world was fear, poverty, gullibility, hatred, division, and false hope. Ask yourself about the Dark Ages, if you have heard about the Dark Ages. Why were they called the Dark Ages? Go and find out. You will know how Christianity is a dangerous religion, just like Islam. So, if you're going to be a pastor, this is your message. If you don't stop lying, you will grow up to become a pastor. If you don't stop lying, you will grow up to become a pastor. Because pastors in Africa, this is their day. Christmas is always their day to make a killing, to make so much money from hopeless Africans, hopeless people in Africa who now go to churches and donate whatever they have. And that is called mental slavery. It is the worst form of slavery. It gives you the illusion of freedom, makes you trust, love, and defend your oppressor while making an enemy of those who are trying to free you or open your eyes. Exactly. Then leave it for a minute. I'm going to repeat it. Mental slavery is the worst form of slavery. It gives you the illusion of freedom. You think you are free. Oh, I'm free. I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven. It makes you trust people, to love people, and defend people who are oppressing you. That is mental slavery. While making an enemy of those people who are trying to open up your eyes, when you come here and tell you, please, religion is all fake. Please, mental slavery is real. Please, don't waste your money on these days. It's hypocrisy to tell me that you're going to celebrate a day with me only on that day. There is a other, there are other days. You can give me a gift on any other day. There's no way you can tell me that you can only meet your mother, your relatives only on Christmas Day. No, there are other days. Come on. Hmm? <clears throat> and um, uh, here is also very important to remember. I looked for a master. And my entire life, until I realized that I am the master, that 
has to master self. I looked for a master all my entire life until I realized that I am that master and I'm a master of my life. Let's leave it there for a minute. Let me tell you this Latin word, which was always used on the 25th of December. They could say, the Latin could say, Die solis invic invictinati. Die solis invictinati, which means day of the birth of the unconquered son. Die solis invictinati, which meant day of the birth of the unconquered son. S U N. That was Christmas. That's how many Europeans could see it, that it was a day of the birth of the unconquered son. Then us continue. Then us continue. Then us continue. Yeah, we talk about three wise men. And I say, no, let us talk about three wise women. Let us stop talking about three wise men and say three wise women. If there were three wise women, what would have happened? Three wise women would have asked directions. They would have arrived on time. They would have delivered the baby. They would have cleaned the stable. They would have made a, a scissor, and then there would be peace on earth. If there were three wise men, women, they would have been having peace today. They would have been uh, able to clean the baby. They would have arrived on time. They would have been able to ask for proper directions. But these ones were men because everything was about men. Anyway. Then let's continue. And this is the last slide there. This season, at this season of winter solitize, may reason prevail. This is how I'm concluding this. May reason prevail in this season. There are no gods, no devils, no angels, no heaven or hell. There is only one, there is only our natural world. The region is but myth and superstition that hardens hearts and enslaves mind. I'm repeating it for the last time. At this season of winter solitice, may the reason, may reason prevail. There are no gods, no devils, no angels, no heaven or hell. There is only our natural world. Religion is but myth and superstition that hardens hearts and enslaves minds. Thank you, Dennis. Back to me now. We have done a good job, Dennis, in the studio. Dennis in Uganda, Kabeko, Brian in Kenya, and of course, Hassan Baya in Kenya. Those are my producers today, and I'm going to conclude it this way. I've given you my reasons why I don't celebrate Christmas. Basically, I'm saying Christmas is not real. Christmas is the equivalent of the day of worshiping a god, the sun god. It is Yuli. It has been given so different names among people in Northern Hemisphere, but also among people in Southern Hemisphere. It's the pagan day. It has never been a rightful day anyway, even if Jesus Christ was real. It's fake. Number two, Christianity is imperialism. Christianity is supremacism. It's the reason why Jesus Christ is not brown, but Caucasian. Because Christ was supposed to be a Semite. Semitic people are supposed to be Arabs. Brown people. At least the pure ones are supposed to be brown people. But look at the images of Jesus Christ in our houses in Africa. Why is that image of Christ a Caucasian? That is imperialism. That is cultural imperialism. That is mental slavery. That is a reminder of colonial relics, a reminder that people came to our lands and took over our lands and gave us their names and gave us their religion and gave us their traditions. I, Katomukas, I will not partake into that. If you're in Europe, if you have European ancestry, it's fine to celebrate Christmas because after all I said, it's your day. You celebrated it so many years ago, thousands of years ago, you were celebrating Christmas, but in a different way, and a different name, and a different setting. I understand it when Europeans celebrate Christmas, but me, who was forced to adopt Christianity, 
who was forced to adopt a culture that was never ours, I will not celebrate Christmas. What is happening with Christmas today? People have commercialized it. It's about making money. I call Christmas Day a day for capitalism to thrive, a day to make pastors rich, a day to make business people too rich. Because hopeless people go to the bank and borrow money sell their pieces of land to go and celebrate because if you don't buy clothes for your wife, for your children, they are going to go away. They are going to hurt you. You're a useless man. You want to get money and impress all your relatives by sending them so much money. Hey, you are in-laws. I expect money from you. It promotes corruption. People are stressed mentally because of Christmas Day because they're looking for money. There are many thieves during Christmas season. Why? People are looking for money. There are many murders, many accidents. People are not mentally stable. They are challenged. People are lonely. Why? Because they're celebrating a day. They even no, have no idea when it started. It's imperialism. It's capitalism. It's supremacism. So why should I celebrate it? It's hypocrisy to tell me that you can only show me love in December. Come on. You can show me love in January. You can show me love in February. You can show me love in April. You can show me love in August. You can show me love any day of the year. People say, oh, it's the day to bring families together. You can reunite with your family if you want. Any day of the year, you can find a formula. There's one you can say, it's Christmas. It's not Christmas. It's an excuse for you people to promote these traditions. Europeans are fine to promote it, but I, Katu Mkasa, I will not promote it. It reminds me of colonialism, imperialism, and slavery. But also it reminds me of mental slavery that is real. The question is, Christianity began celebrating Christmas in the year 336, for example. The year is 336 around there in Rome. That is about the first century. How come that it only became popular in the ninth century? It took five centuries for Romans to sell Christianity in Europe. From the first century, seriously, they are selling Christianity until the ninth century when the entire Europe now tries to see sense in having Christmas celebrated the way Romans want them to celebrate. And why? Because Romans had conquered them. Romans had forced them to take on Christianity. It was never their religion. So if a God is fake, if a religion is fake, if Christmas means Christ mass, Christ mass, why do you expect a Catholic who doesn't believe in gods to really tell you Merry Christmas? I will not. Because it's hypocrisy. Because I understand the origins of Christmas. It doesn't work for me like that. But I respect those who want to promote it, but not at my expense. No. At least I've been honest enough to tell you I don't celebrate it and I don't want anyone to tell me Merry Christmas because that's an insult to me. Tell me Happy Holidays. I will accept that. Thank you so much, Dennis, for producing the show. Thank you so much, um, Brian Kabeko in Kenya. Thank you so much, Hassan Bayer, for the slides. And please remember to subscribe to Humans TV Africa at our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, Humans TV Africa. We are here to educate you, but also we are here to learn from you. Write us an email. If you think I've challenged your thinking and you think I've been wrong, come and challenge me. I'll give you one hour. You come on set and challenge my views and say you were wrong here and here and here. And I won't be in the studio. You'll be alone. Write to us and say, I want to feature and put the record straight. The email is there, humanstvafrica at proton.me. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you so much for watching us and see you in the next one.